this is Josh. And this is Martin. And we have a new AI debate video for you today, and this is on simulation theory. So we already made a reaction video on Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, he posted a video about a year ago that resonated mm. with me. So it's a topic I'm interested in and uh, looking forward to debating it with AI. So if you're ready, mm. let's get started. I'm ready. Um, we're going to start with Concordia first this time. Um, I've already prompted her. Uh, the next topic we are debating is simulation theory. The idea mm -hmm. of us living in a simulated world. Concordia, you will argue that we are live um, that we are living in the real world, whereas Prometheus, uh, he's going to argue that simulation theory does exist. Concordia, mm. you will begin. Thank, Thank you, Josh. Josh. While the concept of living in a simulated universe is fascinating, I argue that we are living in a real world based on several points. Firstly, the lack of definitive evidence. While the simulation theory is intriguing and has been the subject of much debate and philosophical inquiry, there's no concrete scientific evidence to support the notion that we are living in a simulated universe. Secondly, the complexity of our universe. The universe, as we understand it, is incredibly complex, with an estimated number of particles at 10 to the power of 80. To accurately simulate such a universe, an unimaginably advanced civilization with resources far beyond our understanding would be required. In other words, the computational power needed to simulate the universe in all its detail might exceed the capabilities of any civilization. Thirdly, Occam's razor. This philosophical principle suggests that the simplest explanation is often the correct one. The assertion that we're living in a simulated reality necessitates an extraordinarily complex web of suppositions, while the notion that we're living in a real reality necessitates fewer assumptions. Lastly, our limited understanding of consciousness. Consciousness is one of the least understood aspects of human existence. Until we have a solid grasp of what consciousness truly is, and how it arises, it's unlikely we could create a simulation sophisticated enough to generate it. In conclusion, while the simulation theory presents a fascinating thought experiment, it's important to ground our understanding in empirical evidence. Until such evidence comes to light, it seems more plausible to believe that we're living in a real world. All interesting, right. interesting. Yeah, all right, let's go ahead and just pop that in. Prometheus, your arguments for simulation theory, please. All right, Prometheus says, thank, thank you, Josh. you, Josh. While Concordia makes valid points, there are compelling arguments to consider in favor of simulation theory. Firstly, consider Bostrom's simulation argument. Philosopher Nick Bostrom has proposed that if a civilization reaches a post-human stage with immense computational resources, it might run detailed simulations of its ancestors. If one assumes that such a civilization wouldn't go extinct before reaching this capability, it's likely that we're living in one of these simulations, as they would vastly outnumber the real realities. Secondly, there's the issue of the apparent fine-tuning of the universe. The fact that our universe seems to adhere to a set of finely tuned physical constants that allow for the existence of life might be explained by the idea that our universe is a designed simulation set up with these specific parameters. Next, the advancement of video game and virtual reality technology suggests a trajectory towards increasingly sophisticated simulated realities. Given enough time, future civilizations might be able to create simulations indistinguishable from reality. Finally, some interpretations of quantum mechanics lend themselves to the simulation theory. For instance, the idea that reality doesn't solidify until it's observed could be seen as evidence of a simulation optimizing its resources by rendering certain elements only when necessary. To be clear, these are philosophical and speculative arguments. We do not yet have empirical evidence to definitively prove or disprove the simulation theory, and it remains a topic of debate among philosophers, physicists, and computer scientists. 
It's also important to note that simulation theory doesn't negate the realness of our experiences and the importance of our actions. Prometheus raises several thought-provoking points. However, there are counter-arguments to each. Regarding Bostrom's simulation argument, it makes several assumptions. Firstly, it assumes that technologically advanced civilizations would want to run ancestor simulations. We can't predict the motivations of such advanced beings. Secondly, it assumes that consciousness can be simulated, a premise that, as I mentioned before, remains uncertain given our limited understanding of consciousness. As for the fine-tuning argument, it's important to note that what seems to be finely tuned could merely be a result of our existing within a universe that allows for our existence, a concept known as the anthropic principle. We simply wouldn't be here to observe the universe if the constants were different. While the advancement of video game and virtual reality technology is impressive, there's a tremendous leap from where we currently stand to a simulation that's indistinguishable from reality, encompassing not just sensory experiences but the internal lives, consciousness, and free will of billions of individuals. Regarding interpretations of quantum mechanics, while certain phenomena may seem to suggest a simulated reality, they may also be indicative of the fact that our current understanding of reality is incomplete. They do not definitively prove a simulation. In conclusion, while the simulation theory is a captivating hypothesis and prompts interesting philosophical discussion, it remains speculative and unproven. Until we have substantive empirical evidence, claiming that we are living in a real world is a more parsimonious explanation. So she's like saying consciousness is being produced within the simulation. I argue mm. that consciousness is outside the simulation, but being injected into the simulation, if that makes sense, ah. which would be like mm. a um, matrix example. So like Neo, oh, right, right. he's conscious within the pod, but his consciousness, everything he experiences is within the simulation. right here is a little bit scary to me that's like if if the simulation were to exist the way concordia is referring that means that you and i and everyone within it is just a, a product of the simulation itself um, right. so that means our consciousness everything is a product of the simulation which yeah that means if the simulation's turned off so are we um, I exactly. like my idea a little better to where if the simulation's <laughs> turned off, at least we still exist outside it. That's an intriguing perspective, Josh. Under this concept, consciousness is an external entity that interacts with the simulated universe. This is a variant of simulation theory, often referred to as mind uploading or whole brain emulation. It suggests that an individual's mind, including their consciousness, emotions, and memories, could be simulated or transferred to an artificial substrate. If this is the case, it would indeed shift the dynamics of the simulation theory. The simulation wouldn't need to produce consciousness, it would only need to provide a convincing experience for consciousness that is already in existence. However, similar to the original simulation theory, this hypothesis also comes with its set of challenges. Understanding consciousness, to inject consciousness into a simulation, we would need a comprehensive understanding of what consciousness is and how it works, which we currently lack. Technical feasibility, transferring or replicating consciousness would require immense computational power and technical sophistication, far beyond our current capabilities. Verification, it would be challenging to confirm if the transferred consciousness is a true continuation of the original consciousness or merely a copy. Ethical considerations, this approach would also raise profound ethical questions about identity, continuity of self, and the value and rights of simulated beings. So, while the idea of injecting consciousness into a simulated reality is fascinating, it remains a speculative hypothesis within the realms of philosophy and theoretical science. Further advancements in neuroscience, computer science, and related ethical debates would be necessary to explore this concept more fully. Um, 
I, I kind of want to touch once more with Concordia before going over to Prometheus mm. because yeah, again, we'll do that. again, she is uh, like kind of assuming that like your consciousness would have to be transferred. Like what I'm talking mm. about again is more of like a mm. matrix situation. Mm. You're born, you're connected to stuff, you're you're experiencing life within the simulation, but it's mm. just you know, it's not your consciousness being transferred into the simulation. Yeah. But it's just it's... your mind being fooled. The beings are no longer born. We are grown. What is the Matrix? Control. I think it would have made more sense to use humans as CPUs, processors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As, like, like, as opposed node, to power. Processing node. Power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. that was like the idea. That was my take on it, at least. That, that yeah. Was, it, anyway. I, that makes more sense to me. Yeah. What if, yeah. like, um, yeah, it's just using our minds as processors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, that makes but, sense, but, you know, and you, what about this? You know, they have said, like, we only use, like, what, one, two percent of our brain or something? What if yeah, the other 98 yeah. percent is being used by the higher simulation for processing? Exactly. <laughs> well, now we're getting there. <laughs> That's an interesting spin on the simulation theory, Josh, somewhat analogous to the idea portrayed in films like The Matrix. The premise is that an individual's sensory inputs are manipulated from birth so that they perceive a simulated reality while their consciousness remains rooted in a separate physical reality. Let's consider this hypothesis. Firstly, it circumvents the need for an understanding of consciousness to the same depth as mind uploading. It would only require the capability to comprehensively stimulate and trick our sensory perceptions. However, the same technological challenges would apply. To simulate a convincing reality, you would need an extremely sophisticated system capable of simulating all the nuances of the natural world. Additionally, it would need to respond to the individual's actions in real time to maintain the illusion. This hypothesis also brings up similar ethical considerations. It raises questions about informed consent, the rights of the individual, and the value of the simulated experiences. Are they less meaningful because they are artificially induced? Or are they just as valuable because they are experienced and interpreted by a conscious mind? Finally, there's the issue of falsifiability. Currently, we lack a reliable method to test if we're living in such a simulation. Until a testable prediction can be made based on this hypothesis, it will remain a philosophical speculation rather than a scientific theory. Despite these challenges, it's a fascinating thought experiment that prompts us to question the nature of reality and our perception of it. All right, Prometheus, your final thoughts on these ideas? What arguments and evidence can you provide to argue that simulation theory exists? And how might we go about testing that such a system does exist? Josh, you've touched upon a very intriguing aspect of the simulation theory and it's one that aligns closely with some of the key philosophical and scientific questions we face. While we don't yet have definitive empirical evidence to validate the simulation theory, the following points can be argued. Technological evolution. The rapid advancement of technology, especially in fields like VR and ANR, shows us that simulations of increasing quality are possible. While we're not there yet, one can extrapolate to a future where simulations are indistinguishable from reality. Indistinguishable physics. If we were in a simulation, the physics within that simulation would be all we know. Therefore, it should appear as real to us. Thus, the fact that we observe consistent, lawful behavior of the universe might be considered evidence for a simulation. Digital physics. Some interpretations of quantum mechanics, like the holographic principle, posit that the universe might be describable in digital terms at its most fundamental level. This too could be seen as suggestive of a simulated reality. The simulation hypothesis suggests we could be in a simulation, running on a substrate located in another layer of reality, with our conscious experiences being the result of information processing at this higher level. This aligns with the scenario you described, Josh. As for testing the simulation hypothesis, it's a difficult task due to its nature. 
but some have proposed potential experiments. Ancestor simulations. Given the finite computational resources even a highly advanced civilization would have, it might opt to run ancestor simulations with less detail than the parent reality. If we find signs of shortcuts in our universe's physics, it could suggest we're in a simulation. Cosmic rays. Some scientists have suggested looking for anomalies in the distribution of high-energy cosmic rays. If we live in a grid-based simulation, these particles should have a maximum energy amount and their paths should align along the grid. It's crucial to remember, however, that while these arguments and potential tests are thought-provoking, none provide definitive proof of the simulation hypothesis. Until such proof is obtained, it remains a fascinating but unconfirmed theory. I, I actually figured out how to, 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 to say we are in a simulation because it's just so easy. Do you remember like when we talked about um, the DNA strands and, and our DNA encoding, how to build a human? Mm -hmm. Actually, all we need to do to make a simulation is just to to know how atoms and everything collides and in interacts yep. with the other and then build that out. So it's super simple to make the simulation you just have the compute power you just exactly power. yeah i felt that uh, as well you know if you could mm. just on like a very um small scale just control some mm. physics of individual atoms well then at that yeah. point it just becomes you need the processing power capable to scale up yeah scale up and and process all those atoms of what they're doing and um yeah you know i think like Concordia earlier on, you know, she was kind of saying like you would need a computer mm. capable of processing yeah. all the atoms and there's 10 to the 80 in, mm. in the universe. And um, I think that's wrong. I think all you would yeah. really need to compute is like what Neil deGrasse Tyson said is just what we're viewing, what we're experiencing. Everything beyond that just has to be yeah. a rough representation, just uh, well enough to fool us. Yeah, just in the not the field of view but as we said in our immediate nearby like yeah yeah, yeah i mean we just see a speck like the, of a star you know that's all we yeah. see it's not in a yeah. galaxy of billions and billions of stars no. and 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 all this other matter um it's just no. all i can see is that speck yeah science has told me that it's a galaxy and all this stuff but until yeah. i have a um a telescope that's good enough and capable of zooming in on a planet within that galaxy. Right. There's no need for the simulation to compute any of that. No, nope. the, the, the birds up in the air in your video game does not need to be fully animated with high level of uh, vertices and stuff. They just need to be like a triangle that go, rap, rap, rap. Yeah, you know, yeah, two yeah. wings, basically just there is few uh, points mm -hmm. because that's all we need for the simulation to be reliable. The time you give us the the binoculars to zoom in on the bird and now we need to simulate it but that's the other video goes yeah. there <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, you know it goes back to um like am i in the simulation and everything else is simulated or mm. are there seven eight billion people in this simulation and mm. everything is being simulated for eight billion people um, yeah. You know, it gets into a lot of philosophical questions. <laughs> yeah, much so. But um, I really appreciate ChatGPT's input, Concordia, and mm. Prometheus. Um, you know, they definitely say it better than I ever could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right. <laughs> I feel the same um, way. Yeah, Martin. If there's not anything else, I think we'll end this one. Yeah, I think we should end this one. And uh, if you want to support us on Patreon, please do especially generating our avatars costs a lot of money and compute yeah. power so far for us merely humans so we would like to make even more of these videos but yeah. our limit right now is is funding for the yeah. for the avatar so <laughs> yeah i really appreciate that so yeah. um we have no patreons just yet so no shout outs just yet but um nope. looking forward to that first one we really do appreciate it cheers yeah. please cheers bye